Five easy but lesser known games to platinum. Now when I say lesser known, I am aware that that is a bit subjective. Because if I say I hadn't heard of a specific game until last week, I know there's probably somebody out there like What are you talking about? This isn't lesser known. I got this on day one. <laughs> Adrian! Yeah, well done mate. Like I said, it's subjective. I was aiming for a list of games where if you search for somebody's platinum playthrough on YouTube, you won't find anything. Or the odd one or two videos. So basically, the opposite of your God of Wars, Spider-Mans and Elden Rings. Also, I don't consider myself to be skilled or an elite gamer. So if I've got the trophy, then I feel like it must have been an easy one and anybody can get them. So if anybody wants to call a game out and say that it's not easy, I'll happily take it. So let's jump into the list and don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. If this video hits 100 likes, I'll do a second video on the same topic in the future. Never Awake, which came out in September 2022, which is a nightmarish twin stick shooter with a unique worldview. The player will take control of Rem, a young girl stuck in a coma, who takes on a whole host of weird and wacky enemies in her conscience, such as vegetables, dogs, school students, amongst all other things she hates in life, all in an attempt to try and wake herself up. Story-wise, it's not completely gripping, and you may find yourself slightly confused from time to time, but the gameplay is amazing and feels really smooth. The Platinum Trophy is pretty straightforward, just from following the trophy list, and that is what you'll have to do as there is currently no full guides available online. You'll be tasked with completing every level at least two times for different reasons, witnessing both endings, completing a number of challenges, failing levels a lot, amongst a few other miscellaneous bits and pieces. As of this moment on PSNP, there is currently under 100 Platinum Trophy earners, and although the Platinum percentage is quite high, I think that kind of shows that out of the people that have brought this game, almost one in every three have enjoyed it enough to go for the Platinum itself. Seriously, check the game out, and if it tickles your pickle, it's within your budget, then go grab Never Awake, as it's a brilliant game, and if anybody gets stuck, just hit me up, and I'll give you the advice on how to best tackle the issue. The Night Witch was released in November 2022 and is a Metroidvania adventure game with a fast paced shoot em up combat set in a beautifully hand drawn world. The story follows Rayna, a trainee of an elite group of hero like magic wielders known as the Night Witches. During a pivotal war, the Night Witches pushed back evil and saved civilization. But during the game, a new threat emerges, and it's up to Reyna to draw on the power of prayer by linking with NPCs and other villagers in order to grow stronger. You will collect cards throughout the game that, when activated by mana, can deal specific spell dependent on the player's needs, such as a shield if under heavy fire or a power close combat axe which will cleave enemies nearby. The Platinum Trophy is simple, specifically if you follow the guide, but the game can be easily platinumed without using it, with the exception of the odd trophy here or there. To earn the Platinum Trophy, you'll be tasked with completing the game with both endings, and there is a point of no return, which is pointed out within the story. Finding all imprisoned NPCs within the areas you'll be visiting, collecting coins in order to purchase additional spell cards to the ones you'll find along the way, and completing all 27 ambushes within a specific time window and without getting hit. These don't need to be done at the same time, and can become quite simple once you're in the end game. I managed to pick up a physical copy of this for the PlayStation 5 for £9 off of Amazon, and I can honestly say that it was a bargain. I'm sure at times in the future it will be on sale, but even at full price I would have been happy paying for this game. Senran Kagura Burst Renewal is the remake of the original Burst title for the Nintendo 3DS and came out in February 2018. 
Burst Renewal is a beat-em-up hack and slash adventure game which follows the girls of two rival schools all aiming to become the top shinobi. The player is forced to play as a specific character to fulfill certain objectives but once levels and chapters are complete the player can choose whichever character they prefer. While the story isn't the greatest and the combat can get slightly repetitive at times, it doesn't drag on too long before the Platinum Trophy can be achieved. And in order to get that trophy, you'll be required to finish the story arcs for both girls' schools, achieve A ranks in 10 missions which is dead easy, activate and perform specific tasks such as taunts and parries a set amount of times, collect secret documents which are pretty simple to find amongst the whole host of dressing room shenanigans. Now if you're aware of Sengun Kurura games then you know exactly what this game has to offer and for the people who don't it includes a hell of a lot of well shall we call it fan service. Each defeated enemy ends up with clothes ripped off and each 1v1 can leave the losing shinobi completely naked covered only by a ray of sunshine. So this game will not be for everybody, but in terms of trophy ease, this one is probably the easiest on the list, even though PSMP currently doesn't have a trophy guide available. Forgive Me Father, which was originally released back in October 2021 on Steam but then finally had a PlayStation release in October of 2023. This was one that I only found out about due to a friend mentioning how much he enjoyed it and it happened to be the same day it came out on PlayStation, so I checked a couple of gameplay videos and I brought it straight away. Forgive Me Father is a dark retro horror first person shooter set in a comic book style world inspired by the novels of HP Lovecraft and has the feelings of a classic first person shooter from the 90s custom combat experience, dynamic levels of madness all while being presented in a comic book style. Set in the 1920s, the player can choose the role of either a priest or a journalist and the game begins identically with them receiving a letter requesting them to investigate the town of Pestiville, which turns out to be overrun by various Lovecraftian horrors. As of this moment there are currently under 300 platinum earners for this game and my claim to fame is that I was the fourth person to earn the Platinum, or you could say second, as the game didn't officially release until the 29th, whereas the top two, I'm guessing, had early release privileges. To earn this Platinum trophy, you will be tasked with completing the story twice, once for each character, completing 20 waves in the endless mode, use specific spells to take out set enemies, and a few other miscellaneous trophies. There isn't a guide currently on PSNP, but the trophy list is fairly straightforward and if you do require any pointers there are a couple of videos online for specific trophies. Last but not least Demon Gaze 2 which is a role playing old school dungeon crawler which was released in Japan back in September 2016 and then in the west in August 2017. Set in the city of Asteria, you play as a semi-created character who has lost all their memories but somehow found yourself back in contact with two of your childhood friends. Together, you have formed a revolutionist party in order to defeat various demons that have taken over areas of Asteria. Dungeon by dungeon, the task is simple. Make your way to the demon boss at the end, defeat them and capture them within the main character's eye. Simple stuff. The story does fall flat at times but the art style is certainly something to be desired. Unfortunately, the music can get rather annoying at times, specifically after the 35 hours that the guide on PSMP predicts it will take to earn the Platinum Trophy. To earn the Platinum Trophy, you will have to complete the story, find some hidden demons within specific areas, collect items for two main side quests and two post-game bosses, which you will certainly need to grind for in order to be powerful enough to take on. So what did you think of the list, and do you think you'll be taking on any of these games? If so, let me know down below in the comment section. And don't forget, if this video gets 100 likes, then I'll begin putting together a second video based off of the same topic. So hit that like button, 
hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.